Welcome back to Skyline's View. It's James. My boy Kev's here. Kev, what's up? What's up? And we got a very special guest. We had Chase Arnold, aka Big Sack. He's <laughs> joining the show. He is our real one of the week. Chase, welcome to Skyline's View. Thank you. Good. Thanks. Uh, appreciate you guys having me on. It's good to see you guys. Of course. Legend. <laughs> of course, dude. So, so Kevin and I played baseball with Sal with uh, Chase. Good dude, good ball player, and now he's doing some amazing things in the community and and really doing something he loves. And uh, Chase is a good friend of mine. We spent a lot of time together and have uh, been through some crazy stuff. <laughs> and I've seen Chase, you know, go from a kid to now being a full blown entrepreneur and just crushing it. So Chase, you're our real one of the week for everything you're doing in the community in Charlotte. We want to hear all about Maria's and how it got started, the recipe, the name, everything, man. You're crushing it right now. Yeah, well, I appreciate that, man. Uh, so, you know, like you said, playing ball with you guys, <clears throat> being in Philly, um, I knew I wanted to come back home. Um, you know, I enjoyed my time uh, with you guys in Philly, different environment, different city. Um, but I knew that I wanted to be, you know, back home uh, just because I love it so much. Um, so that was always the plan. But you know, I never really knew what I wanted to actually do, you know, with my life moving forward, with my career. So I was working in sales for a year. Um, it was all right. You know, startup job uh, wasn't a long term plan. Um, and then, you know, it was good for a few months. I was working with a few buddies from high school, which made it easy, a smooth transition. Um, and then, you know, the real work started to hit and you're like, dang, this is a job. You know, this is tough. <laughs> Um, and then just got really unhappy, honestly. Um, and I was like, you know, what am I going to do with my life? Uh, I know this is a, a long-term thing, trying to figure it out. Um, so in the midst of all that, uh, April 2019, uh, my mom passed away. Um, so that was a whole uh, ordeal, um, definitely a difficult time. Um, but it really put things into perspective for me. Like, you know, our time is finite here. Um, I'm unhappy with what I'm doing. You know, all I want to do in life is, you know, do something that I enjoy on a daily basis, uh, something I'm passionate about. You know, I figured out that I'm not driven by money. You know, I'm driven by passion um, and desire. So I uh, stayed at my yeah, job for real, a few more yeah. months. Yeah. Yeah. Real quick, like that's one of the things about your story that I think is freaking awesome because something awful happened. You were unhappy before all that. Something awful happens to you. And instead of, you know, figure out not where to not being able to figure out where to go. You channeled all that into doing what you're doing now, what you're about to share with us. Sure. But that perspective and that again, seeing your growth and maturity over this last few this year or year plus now, it's been amazing. And it's because of that attitude you said right there. So excited to hear more about what you're doing with yeah. that channel energy. Yeah. Dude, Thank you, man. So cool. so cool. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, and it wasn't easy, you know, I know, uh, I might make it seem like I, I have it all together and whatnot, but it's been a long process and not all of it has been easy, you know? Um, but the thing is when you have that drive and you have that passion, you know, that truly is what keeps you going. Like, it sounds cliche, but it's like, you know, yeah. do what you want to do in life. And when you figure it out, then you just keep going and you're having fun with it. Um, so, you know, I stayed at the job for a few more months. Uh, and then in the summer, uh, talked to my buddies and was like, you know what, man, I've always liked to cook. Let me try this out. Um, so I put a business plan together, talked to my dad, talked to one of my other, uh, family friends that I trust. And they were like, you know what? I think this can work. Um, I went to them with a plan. You know, I didn't just go to them with an idea. Like I had everything together beforehand. Um, that's all I needed. You know, I get, they got, uh, I got their blessing. They helped me put everything together, um, ordered my trailer in September, which was four months ago now, and actually picked it up last Friday. Um, it's so sick. We'll, we'll we're rolling now. Sure you guys, yeah, it's yeah, sick. yeah. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. So you guys will see the picture, but um, the rainbow color scheme, I did that because my mom's favorite thing was rainbows. Um, and it's, you know, light blue with like the clouds around it. So it definitely stands out. Um, you know, you'll see it driving around. Um, and it has a story behind it. So uh, I'm very happy with how it came out. Yeah, that's so cool. I think yeah. it's like, like you say, it's like cliche and all, but like the fact that you were able to like get your, like you were unhappy and 
then you just got it right together. And I think that's like so cool because like it takes people their whole lifetime to try and find a passion like that. And like you were going through it and you were down, but mm -hmm. it's like, look at you now, like yeah. the group that you've made since then, like it's only going up from here, you know? Yeah. It's crazy. Cause like, obviously everyone's dealing with the pandemic right now. Right. But I was dealing with the pandemic, figuring out what I'm going to do working and still, you know, in that grief mode. So it was like a lot of things flowing at me. And honestly, like I, I wasn't doing anything for a while. Right. And during quarantine, nothing to do, not working. I would just walk. Like that was my thing that I figured out that I enjoyed, uh, got my thoughts going, cleared my head, just listen to music. Um, and that's really when I, you know, decided to like, let me take this from just an interest or a passion and let me actually turn it into something. Um, and here we are today. So, yeah, there you go. There's walk. Yeah. There's yeah. walk will do it for you. Yeah, they'll do it. They'll do it. <laughs> it's something you said though. Like it's, it's crazy though. Cause a lot of people during this crazy period in all of our lives have kind of, you know, people have had a lot more time to themselves. People have lost their jobs. They've had to kind of deal with that period of, of uncertainty. And I think that's a good thing for some people. I think a lot of people think of that in a negative way and they say, oh, people should be finding something to do. Well, if one, it's not that easy Two, sometimes people need to figure out what they actually want to do. I mean, I yeah. kind of had that same feeling you had in my first job where I was sitting in a board meeting and I realized that I didn't talk or think the same way as anybody else in that meeting. And I was like, if I'm going to be sitting up here, this if this is my goal to be in this meeting as an active participant in 20 years, and that's kind of the level of I have to achieve of that thought process. And it's not what I want to get to. I'm not going to sit there for 20 years. So it was tough for me to do that. And for you to be able to do that with everything else going on and the shift completely from being somebody that's working for a business to creating your own and it doing something that you love, like you needed those walks. You needed that time to yourself to let that stuff marinate in your head because otherwise it's just it's a sheer you know, pipe dream to be able to create your own business. I mean, I think. No, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's I, crazy. Not, yeah, yeah, not to cut you off, but like on that thought, you know, like you said, people have this thought to start a business for years um, and might not ever get to it for various reasons. Might not have the time, might not have the money, the resources, whatever. Thankfully, you know, I didn't have to worry about any of all that. Um, my dad's been extremely supportive. Um, I do have the time. Um, so I'm very thankful and fortunate that <laughs> I can cook for a living because I want to cook for a living. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who would choose to do what I'm doing if they could. Um, so, you know, it's kind of a tough situation, not a tough situation, but it's just like, I, I don't know. It's hard to explain. It's like, I know I'm thankful that I can be in this position and do what I want to do. And you just you realize that there's so many people in this time going through much harder stuff than a lot of us are going through at the moment. Um, so you just it makes you really thankful over anything, you know, just being able to do what you want to do and not having any real worries. Um, it's definitely put a lot of a lot of thankfulness in me. Yeah, man. And, and your story yeah. gives a lot of people the inspiration they probably need during this time. I mean. I think like I think when we started this little Sal baseball, save the baseball stuff, like a lot of that was being like people need something to look to for hope right now. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. what well, you're doing, your story, like that's why you're the real one of the week, because you're doing something at a time where nobody else really can. So, I mean, sure. I think we need to hear about the product because I know I've been very lucky enough to have tasted the product. And my God, mm -hmm. dude, you got. That stuff is should be illegal. How good it is! So, I sure. <laughs> yeah, I think Mac, it's different. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I think that's the I think that's the favorite one. So, yeah, um, the Maria CLT mac and cheese um, and chicken tenders. So, how I came up with what I was actually going to be cooking. So, I've always liked to cook, um, but last let me see, it was last Thanksgiving. We had a friendsgiving at my place, and everybody was texting in the group chat like, "What are we gonna make?" Blah 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 blah. I'm like, all right, I'm going to do the mac and cheese so nobody messes it up. Like, I'm just going to put my name in that one and take that. So I made it um, just kind of like on a whim. Like, I didn't have any recipe I went by. Um, my mom's thing was always mac and cheese, so I've always loved to eat it. 
but I didn't really like make it that much because she always made it. So I just made my own recipe. Everybody loved it. I was like, all right, that's, that's cool. Um, a few months ago, 4th of July came around. We had a couple people over just hanging out. Um, I made it again. And some people were like, this is like the best mac and cheese I've ever had. Mm-hmm. Like, There's a lot of people who say that, but when you see like their face and yeah. you can see them eating it, um, you can tell that they're being genuine about it. So people were giving me compliments. I was like, you know what? Let me give this thing a shot. Like mac and cheese is easy to make. Everybody loves it. Uh, you can do a lot of different things with it. So that's how I kind of decided on the mac and cheese. Um, and then the chicken tenders, I do a buffalo chicken mac as well. Um, and I had excess chicken. So I was like, you know what? Let me just sell these tenders on the side. So it all uh, it all works out. Yeah, that's so yeah. fire. I was, yeah. I was really just about to ask if you had buffalo chicken mac. Yeah. Um, that's so far. Yeah, yeah. So we got the OG Mac, which is just the original uh, bacon, buffalo chicken. Uh, and then I think I'm going to throw a, a little wrench in there, do some crawfish, which wow. I know Northeast, Southeast, uh, crawfish isn't that big, but I was born in Houston. Uh, so I got a little Cajun uh, loving in me. So I think the crawfish is kind of like a mix between a lobster and a shrimp, something a little different that not a lot wow. of people see. So I think I'm going to throw that on there too. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So the last time Chase was in Philly, he was so generous that he sent mac and cheese and chicken to our house, and he got this thing rush delivered. And I'd we take care of it. Yeah. So shout out to you. That was very nice of you. And yeah. my God, like we, you know, we went out a few times. We we had a few nights, and coming home to some of that mac and cheese and that that chicken was the best thing in the entire world. It is the best. Yeah, it it (laughs) literally like it tasted like something I paid thousands of dollars for. It was it couldn't have been better. (laughs) I appreciate that. Yeah. So we uh when I get the trailer going here in a few weeks, uh I'm gonna be able to do like individual size portions and everything, which is good and you'll get it fresh. But what I have been doing, I've been doing the family size portions. So like what I sent you guys, uh which will feed anywhere from like five or six to like if you get the large pans uh i can feed like 12 people um so over christmas over thanksgiving i was selling those um and it was doing really well um but then me and my dad talked and we just decided for what i was doing going forward you know i'd kind of need my own space um not to do like a full restaurant or brick and mortar at the time but food trucks uh are pretty hot especially in charlotte with the brewery scene that we have Um, and especially with the pandemic going on, you know, you can keep social distancing, um, and you can pre-order. So you can go on the, go online, go on my website, order for like four o'clock, come to wherever I'm at. I'll have your order ready and you can pick it up and go. So it just kind of worked out like that. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask you actually, cause I know since it's like a, a, a food truck, like you've told me before you have a kitchen space, right? That you make everything. So do you Mm -hmm. prep it all? And then like, do you just prep for that day or kind of like, how do you yeah. do that? Yeah. So I'd say like 80% of the work is done in the commissary, which is just a commercial kitchen. Um, it's just a big kitchen with uh, a bunch of different businesses working in there that I rent space out of. Um, so my boy Hunter, I actually went to high school with him. He runs it and his family owns it. So he's been helping me out a lot, uh, which has been great. But like, I'll go in, I'll do my prep work. Um, so I'll do like, all my veggies, saute those, um, any sort of sauces or anything I need to make. So like the cheese sauce I make in the kitchen. Um, and then I'll have that ready to go, bring it on the truck with me, have the chicken already man- marinated, all that. Um, so all I got to do is, you know, drop the chicken in the fryer, mix the cheese sauce with the noodles, stick it in the oven, and then it's ready to go. Yeah. Th- yeah, yeah. That's sweet. I was going to ask yeah. because I actually, one time, like right before we started school, it was like, beginning of september early like um a couple days before you start and one of my buddies that was in a frat at LaSalle was like yo kev do you want to come work this job with me and i was like what do you mean he was like uh my buddy his dad owns a meatball truck like a food truck and we just have to roll meatballs for like five hours and i did it and i smelled like straight meatballs for like oh, yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's it's not a it's not a pretty job for sure. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna grind, you're gonna get dirty. Um, but like I said, man, I, I love to cook, so like I'd much rather do that than be sitting behind a desk for eight hours a day. You know, for sure. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, the fact that you're able to find this at your age and, and you know what you love and be able to create a self-sustaining business, which is the goal I think for everybody in their life is yeah. uh, it's pretty incredible. So, I mean, you're doing, you. you're doing what everybody else is trying to do. So it's pretty damn yeah. crazy. Yeah, but, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, and did you go say what, like, I just want to make sure I understand like the name and everything behind the name. I think that's a big piece for people. Yeah. So like I said, um, April, 2019, uh, my mom passed away. So her name was Maria. Um, her first name is actually Anjali, which not many, you know, it's not a very common name. Um, her dad is from India. So it's an Indian name. Uh, a lot of people mispronounce it. Um, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to not do Anjali. I'm going to go with Maria. Cause like half the people called her Anjali, half the people called her Maria. Maria is obviously easier. Um, so I went with that. Um, and then the rainbow color scheme, like I said, her, uh, favorite thing in the world was rainbow. So we went with that. Um, and I'm really happy with how the, the trailer came out with the clouds and the, the light blue behind it. Yeah, it definitely looks sweet. Yeah. It's so special, man. So special. Yeah. It's, uh, it really is. And I think it's really sick that you're going to be able to, you know, hopefully drive down in that food truck to Philly one time. And, uh, when we're doing some of our events at LaSalle baseball games, when it's saved, You'll be the uh, presenting, presenting food yeah. truck, and, uh, feeding there all the people. Wars games. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, man. So before we have a few questions for you, but before mm -hmm. we get to that, what do you think about Lamelo Ball? Since you're a big Hornets fan, love him, love him. I mean, you know, people had their things to say about the Ball family uh, before we drafted him, but you know what? Haven't heard anything about Lavar. Um, and on that note. You know, what he did worked. You might not have liked it, but, like, oh, yeah. he got his three boys to the NBA, you know, LiAngelo, whatever, signed a two-way contract. But he got them there, uh, and LaMelo's bald, man. I, I just hope we can keep a star in Charlotte. You know, like, all of our other stars, Kemba, Cam, we've let him walk. Uh, LaMelo's going to be good, man. He, he's fun to watch. Yeah, dude, I, I was saying that. I've been saying it for a while. LaMelo, he's just, like, different. Like, his offensive game is crazy. Yeah. And I was saying that even before the draft. I was like, dude, I wish the Sixers could get this dude. He can score yeah. from anywhere on the court. Dude, honestly, the best thing about his game is passing. Like, the yeah. way he sees the court, he comes in, inbounds the ball, and it's like we're already down the court, boom, throw it to the paint, layup. Like, we With never Miles, saw that kind of – it was exactly, exactly. We never got that kind of offense the past 10 years. Uh, yeah. So, we'll put up some points for sure. He's improving really fast too. Like he's like you yeah. see the improvements, and I think that's the thing that I always think is worrisome with rookies is like if you they may start slow, but if you don't see that steady improvement, it's like oh you mm -hmm. may have gotten a butt. And Philly, right. we've seen way too many times, so we're very familiar with it. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but no, it seems like dude Lamelo is fun to watch, and like he's he's the type of guy that you want in your city because it makes you want to watch every game. Like exactly in a exactly. different way. People always. To go the Bryce Harper contract's crazy, but I'm like, well, you may think that, but I watch every single Bryce Harper at bat because it's electric. Because if he hits a home right. run, I am so much more excited for that Bryce Harper home run than you know, uh, you know, the bench player. Like it's just how it is. Bryce is the guy, and Lamelo is now right. that guy for you. So it's like, I think it's it's fun. Like I first off, the Hornets jerseys logo, everything is sick. So always like <laughs> Fire. The that. Um, That's what we said. And, it's yeah, like all. We did, all we needed was the team, like the court sick, the arena sick, yeah. Beautiful and Michael Jordan, like MJ, like all we needed was a team. And now we, we're getting there, we're getting there. dude. And people kind of like, yeah, man. So you guys are getting people sleep on the fact that Lamelo was like a pro last year, like he wasn't playing saying, against yeah. college players, so like mm -hmm. he was already a professional, a good pro. right? It yeah. makes a difference, yeah. Good pro, too, yeah. yeah. That Australian league's legit, and he's yeah. like putting up good stats. Like a lot of guys go there and they'll put up like five points a game, three rebounds, two assists, and they'll still get drafted first round. Like Lamelo was like putting up numbers. No, he was, he was doing it. He was doing well. Yeah. Well, I just didn't mention MJ, but as part of the questions we like to ask people segment here. All right. MJ or LeBron, Chase? I mean, we all know there's no real, no real way to answer it, but – <laughs> if I'm choosing, I'm taking LeBron. Oh, okay. okay. You know, I, I'm going to throw a disclaimer out there. I like basketball. I don't study basketball. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going with my eyeballs and what I've seen. 
you know, respect to what MJ did, uh, you know, winning six rings. Nobody can take that from him. But just looking at a pure basketball player, if I'd never seen a game of basketball before, and you show me LeBron and you show me MJ, I'm taking Bron. The size, the athleticism, uh, the full rounded game. That's just mine. That's just my yeah. opinion. But he's a freak. Yeah. No. And we grew up watching him. Like exactly. if we grew up exactly. watching Jordan, we probably think different. Right. Yeah. Right. I respect that you said that first off, Chase, because like a lot of people like I I watched MJ play for the Wizards in 2001. That wasn't real MJ, and he still put up numbers. But, like, you're right. Like, we grew up with LeBron. We've seen him play. Like, we can't attest to MJ besides the stat or the, the footage we've seen, which is incomparable because, again, the players right. are so much different and the game's different. So, the one thing I that. really hate about it is that, you know, you see the older guys always say, like, oh, the, the league's soft now. Uh, they couldn't compete back in the day. Well, it's like they changed the rules. So all these guys are coming up with softer rules, but they're bigger, more athletic, stronger guys. Yeah. So like not to say they couldn't get down on the paint and body somebody up if they were allowed to. Like they're not allowed to play that way anymore. But like you don't think LeBron could hang with those guys back in the day at 6'8", 260? Like it's just how the game is played, you know? Dude, he would have been bullying dudes. Right, exactly. Like. Shake Milton would have been bullying dudes back then. I mean, it's like Dude, it's there's a, a lot of guys. There's just yeah. based off a straight size, like Dwight Howard back in the day. What about uh, Dwight? first yeah. ballot? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. All right. So, LeBron, uh, question number yeah. two, Chase. Mm -hmm. How many alarms do you have every morning? When I have to set an alarm, I set three alarms. I don't and like to do three? more than three. Huh? It's like one, like a, Hey, you're going to be waking up soon. Two is like, you're getting closer. The last one. Yeah. Out. I space them out, like set the first alarm five minutes. And then I do the next one, like 10 minutes. Yeah. So I, I give myself five and I'm like, all right. And then when I give me, give myself that second 10, it's like, all right, you got to get up. So is it, is it the straight like iPhone one or default? Yeah. Really? Damn, straight dude. default. I can't do it. I can't. <laughs> what do you have? I have like I'll switch it up, but I have like a bunch of different songs that I'll play. Like, okay, and then because my whole idea behind it was I wanted to start the day in my bag, so I would just play like a song that I was stuck in my head all week, and okay. I would just keep waking up to it. But like something about the iPhone one, the default, it like I mean it wakes you up. It makes me yeah. like feel up. It scares yeah. me honestly. Yeah. For real. Um, so me and Jan, you guys obviously know Jan. Shout out Jan Carlo. Uh, freshman year when we were living together, we had trophies as our uh, alarm before lifts. And Ooh. obviously, I, I can't listen to the song anymore. Like, it, it ruined it for me. So I'm like, you know, I'm just going to stick with the straight iPhone uh, iPhone alarm. I don't want to ruin anything. Yep. I literally saw a tweet today that was about, like, shout out to Apple for creating an alarm that gets you ready to wake up and go, like, fight a world war if you needed to. Like, it was like... <laughs> I think that you ready to, to go and do some military stuff. It's uh for real. Yeah. Um, all right, next question. Spotify or Apple Music? Spotify. Yeah. Simple. That's okay. Uh, it's all right. I can't I can't I don't know. Are you guys both Apple Music guys? Well, we got into it on Twitter actually when the okay. Spotify raft was going on. And okay. I remember you said something, um, because it was like us two, uh Bezo. Oh yeah, and, yeah. Like, I remember that. we're Apple Music guys, but like we were talking about converting. I James also is a Spotify guy. He has like a thousand yeah. hours on it. Okay, that's I had it free like six months, and then I didn't renew it. So that's why I just switched over. You so. used every bit of that six months. <laughs> yeah. Every single last second of that thing, dude. I was so pissed when the clock struck me, and I was like, "This sucks." <laughs> See, yeah, I was Spotify like from the time it came out. So I've been using it for like six, seven years now, like a while, whenever Spotify came out. So I've just stuck with it since then. Wait, so like Apple Music like comes with your phone. So it's like on your phone. Are you just like not a, like, can you not download stuff or what? You so can't. like I don't have the subscription. So like now since they moved away from iTunes, you because you know on iTunes you just go and like buy the yeah. individual songs, but now Apple Music and Spotify are like the same way. You can just go download and stream songs. But
but like it won't let me because I don't have the subscription. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I like didn't know because I figured it was on everyone's iPhone. Yeah, yeah. You can only do like previews, I think. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. Like, I like Spotify better. I do. I, I straight up like it. It's more intuitive. Uh, it's prettier. I don't know what it is, but yeah, I'll be, <laughs> I'll be real. I just have my yeah. student discount that's somehow still going six years later on my Apple Music, so I'm going to ride with it. Ride that. Yeah, ride it. And uh, Chase also has some very good playlists on Spotify, um, so go check them out. I am mm-hmm. subscribed to a few of them when I actually had Spotify back in the day. Yeah, dude, you used so, to have um, me like, okay, pushing the weight. He's more famous. <laughs> food, food and music, those are my two things uh, that I claim. Sorry, I think I was delayed there, guys. Um, You're good. <laughs> Chase. Yeah, I'm yeah. really delayed. <laughs> You're good. Um, You're good. I hear you. Who's more famous? LeBron or Justin Bieber? And this is the entire world. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, dang. So if you'd asked me this, like, I don't know, a few years ago, I might have gone with Bieber. But I think I got to go with LeBron, man. Like, from the way basketball, obviously, but like with the business stuff that he's doing now, um, like in his hometown, building a school, uh, everybody knows LeBron in the States, obviously, but um, with what he's doing with Nike, Space Jam too, like, I don't know, man. And not to say Bieber isn't famous, but like he's not really putting out a lot of music anymore. I don't know, I think I'm gonna go with LeBron. Yeah, I feel like a wider range of people like know who LeBron is. Like yeah. age wise. Yeah. yeah and Bron's been doing it for a while. Like Bieber had his like run of four or five years, but Bron's been doing it like, what is this? 18 season, 19 season. So yeah. 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 yeah no, I think basketball definitely makes it a, uh, like, I think like Bieber probably had a higher peak because he was at such a peak. But I think for staying power, LeBron's got it because people grow out of like the Bieber phase like that. Mm-hmm. teammate idol type thing and lebron's just he and for, for the rest of our lifetimes lebron's gonna be you know the jordan of the previous generation of all the retros will be lebron's like he'll be all the. it's gonna be pretty interesting to see like his career path after basketball because we're already starting to see it earlier with all the stuff that he's doing mm-hmm. and mj you know a lot of that happened after his career so it'll be pretty fun to watch lebron actually um but yeah, he's gonna yeah be I, think he's do, I think he's gonna do good man like him being LA, um, and he's a personable guy. You know, MJ, like, yeah. that wasn't his thing. He didn't want to do all the stuff, the, the PR stuff that LeBron's doing, but I think he'll do well. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to make sure you guys aren't talking because I don't want to talk over you. Um, nah, you're good. All right, last question for me, Chase. Mm-hmm. Room temperature water or ice cold water? I'm an ice cold guy. I, I like it, you know, coming off the field. Nothing like an ice cold glass of water. I agree. Yeah. I disagree, but I respect you. Okay, <laughs> fair, fair. I should probably listen to you. You know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that affects uh, physique or anything. I think that's more like a, I don't know. I just, the cold, the ice cold water makes me like uncomfortable. I, I, that's a weird thing to say, I guess, but I don't know. Yeah, fair. but dude, if you're waking up like hungover, you're not drinking room temperature water. You're throwing a couple cubes in a cup. Right. <laughs> I, I'm also see, a big. I'm a big lemon in my water guy. I don't know how ooh. you guys feel about that. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that. That like hydrates you well. Yeah, yeah. I get the little, uh, lemon squirt bottles from the store, and I, anytime I fill up my water bottle, I just drop a few drops in there, and it, it yeah. makes me drink a lot more water. To be honest. Yeah. The reason why I say that is because. In every hotel, they have like that, like vase yeah. filled with like fruit water. <laughs> yeah, and like every, yeah. time, every time we'd be like about to leave for a game, somebody that would up. be like, "Yo, that hydrates you." Drink some. I'm like, okay. So, yeah, no, I love I love the fruit water for sure. Dude, that's how you know you're at a nice restaurant if they give you water and they already give you a lemon or give you like a plate of lemons. You're like, damn, this is fancy. Yeah. Like. Yeah, restaurant lemon water hits different. That's a fact. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Maria's. You gotta, you gotta like have the cup of water on go with the lemon. Oh, we'll have it on tap. We'll have it on tap. Don't worry. And that's just <laughs> a special drink. Uh, can you name it after us? It's just a, it's a water. I got you. 
some spew juice. Some, some spew juice. Literally just water, <laughs> but you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, dude. Kev, okay, you got any questions? Uh, I mean, I feel like you pretty much answered all of it. Um, I wanted to know what your favorite food is to make and like make to eat. Mm -hmm. So there's a few different things. My favorite food overall is probably salmon. Um, but yeah, a little, little different. But uh, my dad normally makes that. So I don't really make it that much. I just eat it. But my favorite thing to make, probably paella, which funny enough, I actually made that last night uh, for a few of my friends because I just like doing stuff that it all combines into one pot. Yeah. So it's like step by step, but you're all like you're building the flavors all together. And then eventually it's just like a big dish of everything together. Um, so I, I like paella a lot. Dude, you're like boys are making out like <laughs> Yeah, so you're like, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're definitely they're definitely fortunate, I would say that. <laughs> well, I think uh we should collab on a Philly cheesesteak mac and cheese at some point and uh and co brand gotcha. there. Like gotcha. that, that's a that's a strong move. We'll uh we'll For penetrate sure. the Charlotte market and let them know what cheesesteaks are like and and we're helping to bring cheesesteaks to Charlotte. I think that we can make that happen. Yeah, we can do that for sure. For sure. <laughs> But all right, dude. Well, Chase, thank you for joining the show, man. Keep freaking killing it. You're a real one. You are our real one of the week. Maria CLT, Chase, where can you find yourself at on social media? Where can people find out more about what you're doing? Yeah, Instagram, Maria CLT, uh, Facebook, Maria CLT. Um, and then my website is just mariaclt.com. So uh, look out for us in a few weeks uh, to get going here. Uh, hopefully, once we get everything rolling with the truck, uh, we can start shipping some stuff out. So Wherever you guys are listening from, hopefully we can uh, start sending it your way here soon. Let's go. Yeah, I can promise you that wherever the hell you are, you're going to want some of this damn mac and cheese. So <laughs> make sure you type that out. Make sure you wait and you're on that waiting list to find out when they're going to be able to ship worldwide or not worldwide, countrywide. But it's worth the wait. It's freaking amazing. Chase, you're the man. Thanks for joining us. From Kevin and I, talk to you all soon. Peace. Thanks, boys. Deuces.